Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the JBR Play podcast. This week, I am with Ben and Rick. Oh, hello. hello. So, for our topic this week, guys, I thought it'd be quite cool to discuss the things that we loved as kids, like the kind of the cartoons we'd watch, TV shows, hell, even video game characters, the kind of characters we really loved when we were children, like people, like the characters you really enjoyed watching on TV, or like I said, playing on games with. I can't really say playing with, that sounds wrong. But... <laughs> The yeah. children you like playing with. Hmm. <laughs> well. Who would like to start? I shall start. Okay. Rick's hand, <laughs> head is in his hands. Um, I was a big, um, my big thing was Batman. I was a huge sort of Batman fan all the time. Is this um, the animated series Batman or everything Batman? This is the animated Batman. series at the time. Well, that's the thing. I, I had all these, I still got them on video. Like, um, uh, yeah, the, the animated one. Um, and then I liked the, what was it called? It was just called Batman and Robin, wasn't it? The George Clooney one. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. I the, loved it. I thought it was great. With all the, um, the like, Arnold Schwarzenegger he's puns. He's to life. He is the best. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> to me, I was like, yeah. The um, nipple bat suit as well. The bat suit with nipple nipples bat, on it. I, it didn't mean anything to me at the time. I was just like. Now it means everything to me. <laughs> now I was like, what were they thinking? But no, yeah, I loved the animated series. Um, I'll say our, our friend got it for me for um, my birthday. I think it was my birthday, wasn't it? And we'll watch you through those again. It's just, it's a nice bump of nostalgia almost. You can see how it's like, it does, you can see the age, but it's still nice to watch. I was I like one, one of the cool things about the Batman, I didn't watch too much of it, but from what I remember, one of the cool things as well was it had a really good voice cast. The voice actors yeah. were all brilliant. Like, you know, sometimes when you watch um, show, it's, it's sometimes with anime dubs, a lot of people don't like the dubs because the voices are quite whiny and high pitched for certain mm. characters. Whereas, I remember that like, Batman had a really cool voice. It was always a bit. But... Um... That's cool because you've got so many different Batmans now. Like um, when you had Christian Bell, he's really sort of like a cocky sort of you know, ladies man. Whereas yeah, well, not when, not when he's Batman. Hello, no, well, not <laughs> yeah, <I'm> doing. <laughs> no way he's really doing that. But when um, the Bruce Wayne from the animated one, I remember being quite. He was a, he was a gentleman. He was a nice gentleman all the time, and he was like really nice. Like, oh hey, I'm I'm a nice guy. Da, 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 da. He's like, oh. he's re- he talks like that. Maybe that was how he so played like, the field. Uh, like, yeah, and then, then he goes Batman, Batman mood. Would you kick your ass? So what was it you loved about that show though? Why did you Why did you think as a kid you loved why? it so much? Um, I don't know. Why did I like it? Because it was just seeing an awesome hero kicking ass. I guess so. It was, to me, it was just like he, he was quite literally was my hero. Sort of thing. I was like, I love Batman. I want to be Batman. Except I dressed up as Robin all the time when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have an inferiority complex. <laughs> <laughs> can we tell people the story of what you did when you were a kid with your Robin cape? We, we can, yes. Would you like to tell the story? So, uh, sure. So I have a scar on my thumb. Um, which, uh, amazingly, just my thumb. Uh, so I had, it was the Robin outfit from Specifics are Important. Oh, wait, actually, from... yeah, was it the one with the, the, the like, tidy whities or did you have proper worry. trousers? You know? No, no, it was. Um, I think it was the one from Robin and Batman. Uh, Batman and Robin. So it was like. <laughs> did a, it have um, the nipples on the suit? No, it was or? like a proper one. You sort of like had to. It was always made out of like a light foam or something. I can't remember what it was. But basically, it had on the shoulders little um, Velcro bits where you'd Velcro the cape onto. The, the cape's removable. So um, I don't know how I got around to doing this, but we had a running machine, and I remember for some reason turning it on. And somehow getting around to the idea of putting the cape into it. I'm not wearing it. I'm just I'm, you know, putting it in. And it, it shot round, came back. I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is fascinating. Considering I was, I don't know, how old was I? It was my first house, so pre-seven years old. So whatever that, I don't know, maybe six or something. I remember doing that over and over again. It was amazing. I was fascinated. It kept coming back to the point where I didn't quite let go of it fast enough. And my hands went with the cape into the running machine shredded my fingers to pieces. Um, I just remember screaming my head off. My mum came out. I think I don't remember what her reaction was, but I, for some reason, I think it was something like, oh, for God. She probably heard <laughs> this. <laughs> Did she hope that Mr. Freeze was around? It was, a fact, a clock, it was something stupid, a clock at night. And so she's like, oh, I have to take to a and How would you explain um, that in e e What happened to your son? Yeah, oh, he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be like, she's abusing me. She's putting me in the running machine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> putting me, me in the running machine. machine. <laughs> But I remember having the little like bandages where I could like slide them all off and like, ooh, look at my fingers. Um, and yeah, somehow they're they're fine. Well, you were quite young. I didn't when do you that so... again. So, 
So evidently you're not the boy wonder, you're the boy blunder, the more yes, the, the kind of absolutely. I'm, Are you learning, I'm learning. Batman never taught me not to put things in running machines. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should make a comic special on that just to teach kids in case. I would have got a uh, PSA. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Rick? What would you say was a big show for you growing up? Um, I kind of grew up with what was it, Starship Star Trek Enterprise, like the Jean Luc Picard one. Sorry. Go away. Star Trek. Ben. Oh, I watched Star Wars as well, but I was on a TV show, so yeah. I didn't see it as often. Where Star Trek was like every week. Um, Star Trek, Buffy. I remember asking, like, I was like, if I brush my teeth and got changed before Buffy was on, I was allowed to watch <laughs> it at like nine o'clock. Oh, your parents were crafty. Now. Yeah, they were like, we can get him here. We can make him be here, like organized and healthy. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of the characters, and then Charmed. I think those are the free TV shows. That I remember from being younger. That I watched. Star Trek and um, Charmed, I never really got into. My mum used to love Charmed, but I loved Buffy growing up. Yeah. Not that we probably should have been watching it at our age, but mm -hmm. it was a fantastic Depends show. On, the, on how old you are for your age kind of thing, I guess. I remember going over to, it was like a friend, I think uh, some family friends were moving house. And a load of us went over for like a leaving party. And it was quite late at night. And it was the first time I'd seen Buffy. Some of the kid, older kids were watching it. Yeah. And I remember watching it with them in the living room while everyone else was actually having a party. <laughs> and it was really, it was, she, I just remember her fighting like 10 vampires and it was so cool. I, I, I just remember after that kind of saying to my mom, like, can I watch it? She's like, no, no, no. And then I, I used to have to kind of convince her that it wasn't for a grown ups. It was a kid's show. And <laughs> I don't think she ever believed me, but I think she kind of just gave in and was like, okay, you can watch it. It's too much hassle. <laughs> but Buffy was really cool. It's like South Park trying to convince like your, your mum or whatever, be like, can I watch this? Like, it's a cartoon. Look at it. It's, it's a cartoon. It's obviously for kids. <laughs> Funny story. I actually did convince my mom because I just never let her listen to the audio. I only told her, she only saw a cartoon. Didn't yeah. think anything of it. And then when I was about eight years old, she found me watching it. And she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, <laughs> busted. She sees you watching subtitles, reads it like, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> she sounds like um, Carl's mom. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, but no, Buffy was one. Of, and also, Joss Whedon's like my idol. So yeah, Buffy was... Mm. It, it was great because it had the it had the action, the drama, the wit, and the humor. It just had everything you really needed. Typical Josh Whedon. Yes, production. exactly. Yeah, because it, it was one of his. It was his first time as a showrunner was um, Buffy, and it was actually I think his first time really directing as well. Like he directed at school, but that was like one of his first big time directing mm. things. So that was in, that was incredible. Um, start, did yeah. you watch, did you watch Buffy? I didn't know. Oh, Buffy's. A good, I, I still have Is it on Netflix no, still? still yeah, it's on Netflix. You should watch it. it. It's really good. Really good show. It'll be like an in inferior supernatural to me, though. I'm like, where's Sam? No, Dean? but it's different to <laughs> no, very different, different in oh, style okay. to supernatural. And some very. of the episodes, I mean, Supernatural does this as well, so I'm not saying they don't, but um, there were some really creative episodes. Like, Supernatural has some very creative ones as well. Like, this for me, one of my favorite episodes of Supernatural is where they actually go through to like an alternate reality and they are their actors. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's, like, that's a very clever, it's very well done. It's one of my it's favorites. Brilliant. Mm. Um, it's me shows like, what are you doing? But there is a Buffy episode where they, um, and I think it's called Silence, where they can't yeah, actually because, talk, yeah. they can't speak because of a demon. That um, and musical episodes, they've and, got a couple of music. Yeah. I think it's a couple. Yeah, there's one demon that makes everybody sing, isn't it? Yeah. It's because Joss Whedon loves musicals. Yeah. So that yeah. was really cool um, to see how he implemented that. I think for me, though, growing up, I, don't know, I always loved the heroes who were never necessarily successful, but they were always the ones that, try, they were like, like, I think I was talking to you about this earlier. They're like distinctly average people. Ash. Um, who kind of, yeah, and they work their way to the top through uh, hard work. Ash. Well, no, well, Ash isn't distinctly average. He's just a loser. Well, Ash has <laughs> never made it to the top. He's got close, but then just That's been what I say. Top. He never succeeds. But like, I used to love Dragon Ball Z as a kid. That was the big one for oh, me. Oh, yeah. And Power Rangers. But the thing I loved about Dragon Ball Z, I think with Goku again, was like, he was never, um, he, he, was, he was always considered like a bit of an idiot. And anything, but he still made it to be the best he could be yeah. through hard work. And I love the heroes like that who use kind of just dedication and determination to make it to the top. Same with like when I, I, I follow Dragon Ball, I still follow it. But I remember when I got to around 13, I stopped watching it. And then one of my friends introduced me to Naruto. And that kind of became the new Dragon Ball for me because mm. it was like Dragon Ball, but with a really, really gripping story. And again, Naruto is the same type of character as Goku, where. But, even less than Goku, Goku still had a natural talent for fighting and kind of worked from that. Naruto didn't have a natural talent at anything and he was considered stupid, his grades were awful and his skills were less than average. And the whole show, he's just working his way up to being the best and getting his achievement of becoming Hokage. And I really love those characters. I feel mm. they're so much more relatable to people 
and then characters who are just naturally really good at everything. So I think they were really great shows for kids because it showed kids kind of through hard work. If you really are willing to kind of work your ass off, you can make it. Mm-hmm. Ash, on the other hand, doesn't quite show that. <laughs> Ash shows if you work your ass off, you can get close. But I think the whole purpose of Ash in Pokemon is more it's to taking part and giving it your all yeah. accounts. Not if you don't win, as long as you but gave it your all. Taking part for like whatever twenty, 20 years, years, twenty, 20 now, twenty, 20 years. <laughs> taking part for that long, you should probably give up. <laughs> you just suck. Well, no, because if you're happy doing it, I think that's the thing, isn't it? As long as you love what you do, and you never get older, and you never age, then you're <laughs> yeah. fine. Yeah, and then time isn't your enemy. Um, another big show uh, when I was a kid that I really loved. Did you guys watch the '90s cartoon of Spider-Man? No, yes. I didn't really watch yeah, cartoons yeah. in general. Oh, see, the one that used to tie in with Time of X-Men. And stuff. Yes, yeah, 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 used to tie in with X-Men, and they even had Captain America in a few episodes. Yeah, um, yeah there was one. I one of the ones I always remember um, is it, basically he got sent to another planet. And they were like 10 champions from Earth. One was Spider-Man, one was Captain America, I think Storm, uh, one of the Fantastic Four, and a few other heroes from Marvel. And they were against like the top 10 villains, kind of mm. like villains who were picked by someone else. And they had to face off on this planet. And it was re- it was a re- it was like a two-part episode, I think. And it, it was either two or three parts, but it was really good. And uh, yeah, but again, okay, I know Spider-Man's a bit different. He, he still worked. The thing I loved about Spider-Man was even though he was a genius, he would still make mistakes. Yeah. And then it was especially the younger Spider Man. He? Yeah, well, he's not in those in those cartoons. He was older. I thought he was like twenty something. Yeah, but he's not a kid still. Well, like, I mean, um, he's not like you know super like um, you know experience. mature uh, experience. I guess is the word I'm going for. Yeah, but he's still like I love the way like especially and I think we're going to see it with Tom Holland this year, which is mm. going to be a real nostalgia here, and I think it's going to be fantastic. Is he will be trying to save the day. And in a way, he'll accidentally make it worse by trying to save the day. Mm. But then he'll learn from his mistakes and next time he'll do better kind of thing. And that, that's a really good... Again, oh, that's man. a really like, what are you doing? great thing to watch. Yeah, it's only start pulling up like, dude, come on, get it together. But I think no, I think that'll be brilliant. Um, but yeah, going back to childhood stuff, Dragon Ball Z. Did you guys watch Dragon Ball Z as a kid? I watched yeah. a bit. Quite a bit. Because I, I really enjoy... Who's your favourite character? Oh, was I, I think I was a Goku guy. Rick, what about you? I'm thinking yeah. hard. I'm I'm thinking Vegeta later well, Vegeta, on. So I love yeah, Vegeta, Vegeta later on. Yeah. Love Goku. My see, my favorite was Teen Gohan from the Cell Saga. I think I really like Gohan yeah. in the. Um, I remember as a kid, I love Gohan in the Freezer Saga. But then when Goku went Super Saiyan and Gohan didn't, I was like, oh, I want <laughs> Gohan to be my favorite, but he's not a Super yeah. Saiyan. <laughs> and then when he became Super Saiyan, I was so happy. Yeah. I was like, yay, they've done it. And the trunks. then I like trunks. Trunks is cool. Yeah. I think Trun- uh, t- uh, Teen Trunks, when he comes back in mm. time from the future, he's a big fan favorite. Yeah. He's a very good character. Because he's interesting. He He's the first one that really makes the storyline very interesting when he comes around back in time, I think. Um, I disagree. I think the story gets really interesting when they head to Namek for the Freeza saga. The Freeza was quite yeah. good, but I just find, yeah. because I find time travel stuff interesting anyway. That's yeah. why it's really that. The android. And there was like a lot of mystery because something went wrong and what went wrong and where did it go wrong and who was... They've actually done, if you watch Dragon Ball Super now, I haven't watched any yet but I've been reading up on it. There, there is a big arc with Future Trunks and it is about time travel again. They're having to help yeah, him by to going backwards it. and forwards through time. But I watched the first five episodes and I was like, this is essentially just the Beerus storyline. Yeah, and weirdly, Naruto's doing this very similar thing. So they announced a Boruto manga which is Nar- after the Naruto series finished completely. Mm. And Boruto is his uh, son, and it, it takes off when his son's 12 years old. And the first issues, I'm still reading it now, I think it's on issue 8 or 9, mm-hmm. um, it's still telling the story of the movie that came out nearly two years ago. And you're like, okay, um, when are we going to get... Some-? And we do know it's leading to something new, because the very first page of the mm-hmm. very first issue was... It, it showed, I think it showed Boruto a bit older, actually, like a time skip one, mm-hmm. and he was facing off against someone we have no idea who. Mm-hmm. And it was like, today's the day you die like your father. So we're like, oh... God, Naruto's dead in this timeline. Yeah. Um, and then it goes straight back to the movie, and you're like, ah, oh, we've seen this, come on. I guess they're trying, because they get more time, they want to expand on their storyline. Uh, and just, because not every mom might have seen the movie, um, they get it to flesh it out a bit more, give maybe some background to what's coming, kind of yeah. thing. Oh, another, um, sorry, what was I just thinking of? Did you guys watch, I watched it as a kid, and I absolutely loved it. It was Teletubbies. No, oh. um, I was gonna say uh, Power Rangers. No, yes. uh, not. Oh, no, I don't really think I've watched it. Which one was yours? Though? Mine was the original. I remember being around three years old. I had them on video somewhere. If I go back to my mum's house, I'm sure I can mm-hmm. find them. The original Mighty Morphin Power Ranger videos. Mm. I used to. 
Uh, they were so cool. And the Green Ranger was my favorite. And then when he became the White Ranger, he was still really cool. But my favorite still would be Green Ranger out of all of them. Because he had pretty much had Godzilla as a Megazord. Like Mecha Godzilla, which was wicked. And his dagger somehow was a flute. <laughs> he, he could play a flute through his helmet. That was the best bit. But um, Classic sort of 90s telly. Yeah. yeah. And then there was a... Sp- well, it wasn't a spin-off. But um, there were two other shows that were very inspired by Power Rangers. There were, well, I think... In Japan, they were based off something else entirely. And the one I watched was The Masked Rider. And it has I know it has a different name in Japan. And The Masked Rider was really cool. And there was an episode where he actually teamed up with the Power Rangers. Or is he not part of... Well, he's Technically, part of the, I the guess Power they're Ranger part of the universe, same universe, right? but he's not a Power Ranger. Mm. The Masked Rider was cooler. And he had... Um, so in the seasons that did it, he had his original costume, which was like a green one. Mm. And um, he had kind of like red eyes, almost looked a bit like a bug. Mm. And then the second one was golden, I believe his second outfit which was like an upgrade and his third and final upgrade was uh blue and red and white one kind of like iron patriot and style Captain America. <laughs> um and that was that was a cool show i used to love that as a kid but i don't remember too much about it and then there was beetleborgs did anyone watch beetleborgs no. very similar concept to power rangers um, but it was only three teenagers and there was a green a blue and a pink one um but yeah it was basically the same but thing it sounds very similar yeah, yeah but it, no, that was, was um, cool i see mine was light speed rescue so when I liked, I remember, uh, God, I couldn't quite remember the theme tune. I looked it up the other day. I can't remember what it was, but it literally just sparked this thing. I was like, oh my God, I could, how would I ever forget this? It's like, ugh. The nostalgia hit is awesome yeah. when you get that. When, you, yeah. when, you, like, when wow. you've completely forgotten about it and then someone just says something or you see something kind of connected and then you suddenly remember all these memories. You're like, mm. I remember this now. My childhood's back. It's wicked. I, remember like, cause were, I can't remember what the story was. It was something like they had to replace the Red Ranger or something. So they found, was he a fire a firefighter? I didn't get to like Speed Rescue, so oh. I don't know. But I remember it would be quite cool because like, you know, they needed the leader or something. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't want, I don't think he wanted to do it. He's like, I don't want to join because blah, 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 blah. And then eventually they get him. I'm like, yeah! I don't want to be a superhero. You have a new leader! No, I like the Red Ranger, obviously, because... Because he's red. He's red. <laughs> Literally, no. <laughs> he could be like the biggest dick in the world. And Ben's like, oh, I still like him because he wears red. a red suit. The new Power Ranger film, though... Are you, guys, are, are you guys looking forward to seeing that? Yeah. I think it looks that. good. The trailers look very promising. And like, like I said, Power Rangers isn't something I really follow anymore at all. When I heard they were making a, they were making a new film and they were aiming at an older audience, I was like, is that going to work? That mm-hmm. sounds like a risky move. Maybe you should leave it. If you're going to reboot it, leave it for kids maybe. But then watching the trailer, I was like, oh, it wow, this look looks decent, yeah. yeah, this looks good. They put the time and effort into this He's film. directing it? Oh, I can't remember his name. He's only done one film before, like one big feature film before. Um, and it wasn't even that big. Um it was kind of one of those films that was kind of like in transition between indie and borderline oh, right, indie yeah. and mm, feature yeah. like proper big budget feature film. And um so hopefully hopefully be the thing that launches him then. Yeah, well he was, his last one was praised really highly. I can't yeah. remember what it was now. It's gonna bug me. But he, he um it is a good film. He's very talented. I'm trying to remember I remember really enjoying it when I was reading up on him. Uh but yeah, the film itself looks great. Mm. And um I'm wondering if they're gonna hint at the end. Because you know how in like Marvel and DC now they hint at other heroes mm, and yeah. other villains. Do you think they're going to hint at other Rangers? Because obviously you will. The Green Ranger Tommy isn't in this film. It's the five. It's just five of them. It's just the five: yeah. the blue, the black, the yellow, the pink, and the red. So if they could bring in Tommy at the end, because he obviously gets made by the well, villain. Who are these? Are they going to be the Mighty Morphin? Characters? Yeah, the Mighty Morphin. They are. Yeah, 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 they are the same. Yeah. Uh, you've got Billy, Jason, Kimberly, yeah. and Zossil, which will be really cool. And the Zords, again, like we've seen photos of them. They, yeah, they, same the posters. They look incredible. They look cool. Oh, I see, talking about this now is triggering other things. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if it, I bet neither of you did, uh, you two ever watched it, Zoids. No, you told me about it, but I haven't seen it. So Zoids was actually really cool. It was, it was an anime, and um, it was set on this um, other planet, and it was set in the time of a civil war. And the way that the soldiers mainly fought, though, were in these um, basically mechs called Zoids. And they were ba- a lot of them were based off of animals, like dinosaurs. So yeah, the main right. character mm-hmm. used one called the Blade Liger, which was obviously based off of a Liger. And it was really cool. And they used to fight in, the, in these robots. And they literally, my favorite was Irvine. I, I think it was called the Lone Wolf or something, or the Gun Wolf. And he literally, it was, a, it was this really cool black mech wolf with a giant cannon on its back. And he used to be really quick. And what he'd do is he'd flank the enemy because he was so fast and then just blow them up with his cannon. And it, it, that was a really cool show. And then they did another one, like um, a second series, about like 100 years after the first one finished. So you had none of the same characters. Um, and they put the main guy again in a Blade Liger, but a different one. I think it was a Liger Zero. But he was really bad. And the war had ended. And I remember seeing him competing in a tournament. And he actually won his first fight by fluke. Because he went to shoot at the enemy and he missed and hit the cliff. And the cliff oh, just happened yeah. to fall down on their Zoid and break it. Um, but Zoid was a great show. 
And one more, which I bet no one here watched. Uh, Shaman King. I have never even heard of it. Did you ever hear of Shaman King? No. Okay, so Shaman King was basically... Uh, it, every... Shaman or Charman? Shaman. Shaman's like shaman. shaman yeah, right. shaman. Yeah. So um, the way it would happen is every 500 years, there would be the Shaman King tournament. And only, obviously, if the only way you could tell if someone was a shaman or not is if they could see ghosts. Um, and then they'd have to form a connection. They'd have to basically pick a spirit or spirits would pick them uh, to basically fight in the tournament. And the main character, Yo Asakura, he, he um, found a spirit called Aminamaru who was a samurai who had died 600 years before. And he was like falsely accused, I think, of murdering his friend. I could be wrong on that, but he he had a shameful, a false, a false shameful past, basically. He was set up and was executed. And um, he doesn't really trust people, but Yo managed to get him on board to fight with him. And it's really cool because the way that they would fight at first was they would put the spirit into themselves and the spirit would effectively possess them and fight using their body. So when Yo first started fighting, he would, um, he would he, at first he only had a wooden sword, but eventually got a proper katana. And then the samurai possessed him and used his body to be a, basically a samurai in combat. And then later on, they found out really cool ways of doing it that he could put the uh, the spirit of the samurai into the sword, and it made you know um, I can't remember what their names are, but like the shoulder guards that samurai would wear their armor. Yes, mm. like the little slit yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, he had one of them basically growing out of the sword and going up his arm. That's so as he was cool. fighting, he could just block with that. And then other characters, like there was one character called, in the English version, he was called Trey. In the Japanese version, I think he's called Horo Horo. And uh, he, his weapon was his snowboard and he had like a little um, fair, ice fairy thing and he'd put it in the board and then he can make ice come out of the board, like uh, giant ice spears come out of the board and stuff. Or he can make it snow. Yeah, so he's either going snowboarding um, anywhere. And uh, that was really cool. And then, so you had three, you had three like prelude fights and you had to win two of your three fights. Mm-hmm. Otherwise you didn't make it through to the tournament. And then in the tournament, you had to find the location. They go, right, it's around this area here. And you'd have to find the tournament. And then you'd have to form a team of three. And then you compete. And then eventually, one of you would become Shaman King. At the end, you'd all have to split up and fight individually. And that was a fantastic series because it was really cool like how creative they got with these people using different spirits and uh, things like that and how they all fought. Well, it sounds like you've know, got a lot to work with with that. You, know, you can go anywhere, really, yeah. in terms of the spirits. That could actually be a really cool live-action movie. You can make a fantastic live action film out of that, I reckon. If you uh, could afford to get the right people, yeah. Yeah, and special effects, yeah. yeah. Instead, they turn your childhood memory into something horrible. What about childhood video games for you guys? What, I was like, going to say back on to that. Oh, sorry, Digimon. Yeah. Was my oh, yeah, oh, Digimon, Digimon was a good one. That was my huge, was just. Oh, I loved it. It was the way, like, because they all had such different character traits and they all had such massive flaws. That was the thing. Yeah. About it. Like, you know. Ty was just so he had you know the courage obviously that's his crest he's just such a what do you call him meathead that's what you call him I say well, he's quite hot headed and arrogant yeah he's just yeah he wasn't the smartest guy ever and then like Matt was the one who just never really trusted anyone did he he like you know I want to look after my little brother you all just back off basically but one thing that's the way they became best friends was like yeah. the one thing that was really cool about that with Matt and TK um, was the whole um, the way they did that I thought was very clever it was because of the parents divorce. And that mm. was things we hadn't really That's seen in cartoons re- as kids. So real. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. And he was very overprotective of TK. But like you said, he was very distant to everyone else. So yeah. he re- he was so overprotective. He loved his brother and was so protective of him. But everyone else, he he couldn't let himself get close to. Mm. And that's actually quite a deep story to be telling kids. But it's something that kids need to hear this day that's and age. That's the thing about anime. That's why it's so... I think it's so good. It's because it, it tackles all these real subjects. Just in a very like extreme uh, way kind of thing. Yeah. Like, it's in the situations yeah. that are in a very extreme. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, it's just so much more like, you know, for example, my big cartoon I used to watch when I was a little, little was um, Dexter's Laboratory. Mm. I mean, you know. You are I, stupid. I don't know if I learned, what did I learn from that? I think I tried to, I wanted to, this is it. In my room, I remember wanting to get a hammer and like a chisel and just hammer through the wall and keep going to make a tunnel so I could make an underground base. I just, I just assumed for some reason the wall would go on and on and on and on and on and I would just go through to the next room. And I remember wanting, because um, I loved uh, macaroni cheese, so I wanted to make a tunnel. I went down into like a tunnel of an underground basement full of macaroni cheese. <laughs> I, I, sure did. I just have visions, you know, of him hitting through the wall and his, like, mom, like his mum working at the computer and it's just this big bang and the wall falls. Yeah. He's like, what are you doing? Uh... This isn't my base. <laughs> Retreat. <laughs> Things like um, it was Pingu, and um, he left home once. I remember this. 
and he had, you know, the classic, uh, the, the sack on the stick. The stick, yeah, yeah. with a little napkin. And he left with a sledge with all his stuff. I can't remember why. I think he was annoyed at his parents or something. But I remember wanting to do that as well. I wasn't annoyed. I, I just wanted to just go on an adventure. So I remember getting a sleigh ready. That we had, I don't know how you had a wooden sleigh in the shed for some reason. Put a load of stuff on it and started wandering off. And mum's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm leaving. She's like, <laughs> I don't think you are. So, oh, okay. I'll put my stuff back then. <laughs> Ben's on my plan. plan. <laughs> You're a destructive child. Pingu. Did you ever run away from home as a kid? I, I think I did the thing of running away, but I just ran down the end of the garden, just sat in the bush. Because <laughs> I could get into the bush, uh, into the hedge even. Um, so you could literally just sit there and have a little little camp. When, well, when I was small enough now, I don't think I could do that. Yeah, I think I ran away and just got around the corner, I remember hiding by a tree and being like, I'm actually too nervous because it was getting dark. I was like, I'm too scared to go further. But it's a matter of principle. I'm staying here for a while so they can be scared. Oh, God, it reminds me, like, do you remember Courage the Cowardly Dog? Yes. There was some stuff in that terrified me. There was some, I remember like this, do you know, you know where, um, in my house, you got that little bit, um, where you run up to the back, where the houses are at the back. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, my friend Nick used to live up there. Yeah. So I used to, you know, obviously go see my friend who lived behind me. And it's this long sort of, I don't know, what is it, like 50 metres or something road. Um, and when it got dark, I used to go to his in the day, in the, in the light. And then the way home, I used to sprint down that as fast as possible because I kept imagining. It was like this, um, I think she was, uh, in my head, she looks like something from like a Medusa or something. Like she's got all the weird tangly, hairy look. From Cowardly the Courage... Cowardly, Cowardly the Courage... Cowardly the Courage... <laughs> that's, that's changed the idea of the whole thing. Courage the Cowardly Dog. I remember seeing that all the time in my head. It'd be like, fucking run! And being at the door, like, fucking open the door, open the door, open the door, open the door, open the door. <laughs> I'll never forget when uh, I was about 13. I used to live... You, you guys know Swamwell House. I used to live in the middle of nowhere. And it was surrounded by either farm fields at the back or woods at the front. And my next door neighbour, I um, went over to his one day with my sister. And we watched The Ring which was stupid. Yes. And I must have been around 12 or 13. And on the way home, because obviously because you're surrounded by woodland and where the well is in the woods, I was freaked out. And my sister, I didn't realise what she'd done. She'd hid. And as I was walking back to my, she jumped out. Oh my God, the panic attack. Literally, I think my heart exploded in my chest. I didn't talk to her for like a day. And then to make it worse, I got to bed that night. And obviously after just being ter- after watching a scary film and being terrified in the woods on the way home, on the driveway surrounded by woods, I went to bed that night and I was so scared. I was like, Okay, I've got, I used to have a TV, um, like an old TV in my room, a built-in video player, like a really small TV. Hmm. And I'd recorded Dragon Ball Z on the Cartoon Network. And I was like, I'm going to watch Dragon Ball Z because then I won't think about the ring. I can just watch it and fall to sleep, which worked. The only problem is when those blank tapes end, they just leave <laughs> static yeah. on the end. And I woke up in the middle of the night and my TV was just static like in the ring. And oh my, literally, I couldn't move. I was so scared. I remember just grabbing my cover and pulling it over my head. And my logic was, if she can't, doesn't look me in the eye, she can't kill me. So I just held the cover over my face. And I was like, what is it? She just grabs the cover and pulls it off. And I was like, well, it's too late now. She's already out the TV. (laughs) So I was literally just like holding the cover. Like, I can't, I can't. seen the ring and then you just watch the grudge. But, uh... Did oh, you cover up or did you put it down? Luckily, I didn't watch The Grudge till I was a bit older, but oh, that, yeah, that was just, it was horrible. You should never watch The Ring as a child. There's a new <laughs> ring coming out, which I think I'm old enough to manage now, oh, but that film's traumatized me. Yeah. Which is a clever, it's a really clever, uh, clever concept there, embracing the, um, the online phase. The online social yeah. media thing, which I think is it's clever. It works well for it. Yeah, yeah it adapts it to modern times, definitely. Yeah, instead of like getting a tape in the post or yeah. like, hey, did you hear about this tape? I bet a tape would be like, well, I can't play this, so in the bin. Yeah, burn it. <laughs> burn yeah. it with fire. Just send you a DVD of it. Hmm, okay. What's this DVD? <laughs> That's a good... Thinking about what you said, though, about um, Courage the Cowardly Dog being having some quite scary things. Were there any, was there anything else as kids that, was there, like, that you were meant to watch that was for children that was quite um, scary? What was I scared of? I had to watch something in school that terrified me. It was like an education thing, like in the Netherlands. Was this in sex ed? No, (laughs) no, John. Ah! I was like six. This was not sex ed, John. Was it? This was learning the alphabet. Was it six ed? Oh, who ed? Six. He said he was six. So is it six ed? Six ed. The door's closed. You know where it is. (laughs) I'll see you later. (laughs) My work is done. It had had these puppets, and you know I hate puppets. 
fucking freak me out. And this is puppet like this the evil guy and he would randomly appear in bits to stop like the good goldfish or whatever the fuck it was. What? Something really weird. And it was this goldfish and it was just going around like learning different letters and names and things like that. And just be this e evil puppet kept appearing. And I'd just be terrified. I'd be lying in bed and it's like, you might come. Same with uh, this, Sesame Street. The, <laughs> Were you the, scared of Big Bird? No, the count. Oh, the count, yeah. The count oh, terrified really? me. Yeah, if I started counting in my head, I was afraid Bam, he would appear. Like Can we please get a count puppet when Rick's just chilling one day in a video and be like, oh, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, how do you feel about puppet spiders? Is that the double combo there? I think that look is a no. Uh, no. That feels like kind of weird though. Puppet spiders, I don't know. Right, then. Do you know what was you really... can separate them, that's okay then. Do you know what was terrifying as a kid? Did you guys ever watch Goosebumps? No. Oh yeah, that was quite terrifying. Yeah, me. there was one that I will never forget because it. Tra I think puppet. it did traumatise me, the puppet one. Yeah, Night of the Living Dummy. And it was a ventriloquist puppet, ventriloquist puppet, that um, that had a card in its pocket and they, were, and they read the words. It was a spell that brought the puppet to life. Mm. And he would basically go around the house and turn other people into puppets. And it was really creepy. And this old house I told you about, I used to live in the middle of nowhere, was an old house. And I remember we had this really narrow corridor and it had all the old wooden beams and everything going down to my bedroom. And I remember one night, I could see the light on the landing and I could just imagine him walking down towards me, coming to turn me into a puppet and I couldn't sleep. That one was, that's the, I mean. You don't want to be a puppet? No. There's multiple episodes I, of that one. I don't want to be a puppet. dummy. Yeah, it had like three parts, didn't it? Three <laughs> parts of traumatizing children. Yeah. Mm. So you never watched Goosebumps at all? No. It was eerie. It's on Netflix. Yeah, is it? I think I did. Mm. But like even now, I'm, I yeah. won't watch it. No, my sister used to watch it. I think I maybe caught one. And um, I think I, for some reason, I had this memory of seeing one of them and thinking, I don't like this. So I never yeah. watched it. There was, a, there was another one which was quite creepy where you entered this haunted house, but once you entered, you couldn't leave. Um, and it was because it turned out like, I think there had been a couple who had died there who'd always wanted children. So when children entered the yeah. house, they would keep the children on scene. It trapped in the house yeah. until they died, I'm guessing, which was quite eerie. Well, oh, they died. It was in like of hunger and starvation. I don't know. I can't remember too. Older well. and they'd be like, you can go now. Yeah. You're an adult. We're bored of you now. You got into the real world. You yeah. haven't learned anything, but you're like, I, I'm a go <laughs> Sam and Dean, maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the new Winchester Sam brothers. The, uh, the hunters. What about, um, I guess kind of video game characters. And she's like, I know, I think I know one you're going to say it was a big one for you. Who's that? Crash Bandicoot? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was my, what my first Xbox, Xbox, uh, PlayStation games was Crash Bandicoot. Cause um, one of my friends had, um, he had all of them. Uh, he, he had the first one, the second one, the second one. He, uh, yeah, he owned the second one. I think he borrowed the third one of a friend, but then the friend never wanted it back. So then he just gave it to me. Or did he just steal it and his friend doesn't know? <laughs> the... <laughs> who knows? Who knows? They're probably going to go on to him now and be like, where is it? I want my Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> so yeah, I had all of them because of that. And oh God, they were just, they were my games. I loved them so much. They were brilliant. I, I have to, I don't want to because it's expensive, but I'm going to have to get a PS4. Just for Crash just Bandicoot. Just for the remakes, yeah. Because I remember when I got my PlayStation as a kid, it came with Crash Bandicoot 2. I never mm. had Crash Bandicoot 1. But Crash Bandicoot 2 was amazing. Then I eventually went around to friends' houses who had Crash Bandicoot 1. I played it. It was a very good game. I love 1 and Warped. Warped was 3. That was a good one. And of course, I think big Pokemon game characters, like Pokemon Game Boy games, their characters. Well, yes, yeah, I think I only played the first, uh, I say the first three. By the first three, I mean red, blue, yellow. They were um, the big ones for your childhood, I think. Like, yeah, they're the only ones I ever played. I don't just mean you personally. I mean, so like the big ones for oh, people of our age's oh, yeah, childhood yeah, yeah, with the yeah. Pokemon red and blue and yellow. Well, yeah, the, the big ones. Funny story actually about Pokemon Yellow. One of my friends at uni was telling me. Oh, um, I've got a good one as well. Yeah. He um he was he what he thought because Pikachu followed him everywhere that because he couldn't evolve you can't evolve that Pikachu into a Raichu, so he traded it over to his friend on Red and Blue. They evolved it into a Raichu for him and he traded it back and he thought it would still follow him <laughs> and then it just didn't and he was really upset because he just lost Pikachu following him as well and <laughs> Raichu wouldn't follow him. It just would stayed in its Pokeball. So he was really upset. He was like, "I've ruined my game." I so, said the, the same friend I was talking about. Um, you remember the time when you used to be able to, you'd watch telly and they'd come up with adverts to buy stuff. You could buy stuff off the telly. Um, one came up for him for Pokemon Yellow. Uh, I can't remember if I've told you this or not. But he um, he bought it with his mum's credit card. Um, and she found Dangerous out. Move. Oh, yeah. He found out and they, they were not amused. Um, she literally made him go outside, take Pokemon Yellow, put it on a tree stump and smash it up with a cricket bat. 
What? What? Yeah. That <laughs> seems like, like extreme parenting. I guess that kind of teaches you if you buy stuff, I'm going to smash it or make you smash it. It's even worse. But um, yeah, I don't think he ever did it again. <laughs> no, but that seems so extreme. Yeah. Parenting 101, apparently. <laughs> right. Teach your kid to break stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. But yeah. Um, so he didn't have Pokemon yet anymore. I did. What did <laughs> you just go and recover the parts? <laughs> I remember once I was playing Pokemon um, Yellow and I accidentally dropped my Game Boy in the cat's water bowl. Oh, yeah. And I was devastated, but I put it on the radiator for a couple of hours and it was fine. It dried out. Everything it worked okay. It didn't wipe the memory oh, or anything. All uh, tech, probably. Yeah. Well. <laughs> but that was scary. That was like a heart stopping moment when you just see your, all your like hours of Pokemon going into the, literally down the drain. <laughs> I think I've told you the story of when I first got my Game Boy. I, um, on my birthday, I remember being really happy. I was outside. On the pave, uh, the pavement, the um, pavement, yeah. Well, concrete floor. Um, I was so happy. I was like, yes, da, 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 whatever. I th don't know what went through my head. I threw it up in the air. I was like, yeah, I went to catch it, and I missed. It went mm, into the ground, and I tried to turn it on, and it wouldn't work. So I was like, I've just broken my brand, new, my brand new Game Boy. So my mum sent it back. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't work, and got us a new one. I was like, yeah. Your parents must have despaired of you as a child. They must have been like, take uh, him back, he can't be ours. Special individual, apparently. He sticks his hand in treadmills, he, he throws his game his toys. on. He hammers holes in walls, wall. yeah. <laughs> but yes, I remember when I got Pokemon Blue, I remember because obviously I didn't have many games at that time. That was like one of my first big games. And it was a Game Boy game. Um, I remember the house, the first house, I was like, this is it, this is, this is cool, I guess. And just wandering around the house, thinking that was the entire game. I didn't know you had to walk into the carpet to leave. And then when I woke, it was my friend Nick, he taught me that. So you walk out, I was like, oh, there's a whole world! <laughs> what? How many hours, I would love to know how many what? hours he spent in the house. Maze. What did you think the purpose of the game was then? Just... I, I don't know, like, house simulator? <laughs> Live in a house? <laughs> I don't, I literally didn't know. Did I you... didn't know anything about Pokemon, I just knew I had a game called Pokemon. Did you guys ever injure yourselves playing games where you were, um, uh, where you were like playing as characters you loved as a kid? So when you were like, obviously, yeah, like, Robin. No, no, you weren't pretending to be. <laughs> Robin never was like, Batman, I can save the day. I'm going to run my cake through a treadmill. That was just like, I mean, listen, you were pretending to be Robin and you like jumped off of something and hurt yourself. I or... used to dress up as Spider Man. I used to climb down the banisters. I didn't think I ever fell. <laughs> No, I got to say, I cracked my head open three times, but that was because I'm an idiot. I was trying to reach the light switch once, so I stood on the table and fell off. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Um, the only time I think I was ever injured, there might be a couple, but at the moment, the only one that's coming to mind is I was about three years old, and I was playing Power Rangers with my like childhood friend, this guy called Ollie. Oh, you say that, I was playing Power Rangers. We were playing Power Rangers, <laughs> and he swung a sword, like his Power Ranger sword, and it hit me so hard in the testicle. Like, in the oh. And my mum had to take me to the doctors. Did it matter at three? And I mean, it's not much to hit. Doctors, know, apparently, this is what the doctors know, said to, according to my mum, she tells me about it. She was like, hit in, swollen testicles, hit in testicles. it's a girl. <laughs> Who was um, hit in testicles by former friend. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember this, but apparently yeah. it was, apparently the way I went down, I was screaming and crying. So yeah, Power Rangers, dangerous to play as kids, probably even worse as adults. <laughs> I, so I don't remember hurting myself, I remember hurting someone else. Um, I had, I think it was like um, a watch from Cosimodo, Cosimodo, the Hunchback of Notre Dame even, the, the Disney one. And I remember, I can't what I was doing, but I remember spinning it round and round and round. My mum goes, don't do that or someone's going to get hurt. And you can imagine, obviously, what happens. I keep doing it, and I catch her in the eye and go... And I cut her eye. I like, oh. oh, I bet you weren't her favourite son for a while. Well, I never was, but she didn't mm. got the one, so... <laughs> Where did Good it choice. all go wrong? <laughs> but no, it's, well, actually, did, I'm sure people injured themselves playing wrestling, because everyone loved wrestling as a kid. Well, yeah. So I think there must have been injuries from like wrestling. We, like I remember if I used to play games like my old next door neighbour, I probably ended up in tears a lot more than often being like choke slammed into the floor and like choke people's slam. elbowed. It always get out of hand. You do it on the trampoline. You'd always like wrestle on the trampoline because obviously because you think you're throwing them to, like a bouncy floor. Oh, the funniest yeah. thing is be when you see people doing wrestling on the trampoline and they throw slam someone into the ground, but then they bounce up and off the trampoline, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you didn't think that one through. Yeah. Uh. I remember, yeah, I used to, um, well, the best moment I ever had, because I was always the one that was told off all the time. It was always me and my Aww. sister. 
Well, it was the little shit. Well, we've um, heard, yeah. <laughs> and I remember, what was it? The one time she got told off, she hit me in the face with like a, it was a little toy makeup bag or something. And my mum's like, no, you do not do that. I was like, yes, you took it off. I'm the best. And the only other time I remember was we were play fighting. And I need myself in the face. <laughs> like, I think I fell over on the sofa and she like did like, I don't know, and my knee came and whacked me in the nose. I've never had a nosebleed apart from then. And I was just right to my mum, like, Lewis, she did! And she sold her off. I'm like, yes! You're such a little I dick! Was champion! Asshole. What were you doing? Were you like, oh, I feel my special attack? I just need to summon. You know, I can imagine you doing that as well. <laughs> Uh, as a gangly, lanky kid. I think <laughs> my limbs just go wherever they want. I really injured my sister once, and I felt awful about it at the time. But we we used to live where I said well, we used to live in the middle of nowhere. We had a big gate, and what Charlotte would do she is she gate. she'd sit on the gate, and we pretend it was a horse, and I'd swing it, and also it was like the horse moving. Yeah, horses go. Side and then to side. I remember distinctly going, "Oh, make it go faster!" So I did it as hard as I could. And then when the gate locked, the whole thing just shook and she went flying <laughs> off the gate. And I was like, oh no, what have I done? And she just crashed into the floor and there's that silence before the scream. Oh and God, then the the... And, I, and then she screamed in pain. My mum came outside and I knew I was fucked. I was like, there's no way I can explain this. What's the gate? What's the gate? And um, oh yeah, we had to take her to the hospital. She went, luckily no broken bones or anything like that, but she had to go to A&E. And uh, I said to say, I was not in anyone's good books for quite a while. But I don't think I ever injured myself and blamed it on my sister. I was never well, that bad. I'm not terrible. We did once when we were young, we were playing, uh, I think we were playing kind of a silent, some form of hide and seek, but we tried like hide and seek fused with it. And I was hiding mm. under this small table. And apparently my mum had, uh, my mum had gone out somewhere and my uh, grandma was babysitting. And my mum used to collect these China buildings, these really oh. expensive like China buildings. And I hid under the table, like three of them on top. And Charlotte found me and I leapt up, hit my head and knocked one of them off. And luckily the only thing that snapped was the chimney. So we just put the chimney really carefully back on. She didn't notice for like three years. And then when she found it, she's like, what happened to this? And we, we kind of forgotten by this point. So we're like, we don't know. Do you and remember then that, yeah, that we remembered you years so later. We were terrified of breaking something. We do like, what, what, do we, what do we do? What do yeah. we do? Who, who do we, we blame? Can't, we can't say anything. <laughs> Rather than just going on being like, like the classic, that's what my mum used to say. Why don't you just... Bring it to me and say, I'm sorry. I was like, I, I, I can't do that. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cannot do that. The fear You're goes through too much. much. Yeah. <laughs> My parents will murder me. <laughs> it's too much to ask. Like when I learned to say please and thank you, I had um, an action man. Um, it was one where you talked into this like uh, remote thing, kind of like a walkie talkie, and it would come out the action man's face. So it's not really got a mouth, but yeah. Um, and yeah, I remember I, I really wanted it was a celebration, a chocolate. I really wanted one, and I couldn't. I don't know what is wrong with me. I couldn't just say, "Please, may I have a celebration?" So I dumped Action Man on the table, ran away, and I went into the in the mic. Went, "Please, can I have a celebration?" <laughs> I think my dad was like, "No, come in here and ask me." I was like, I can't even like, "Yes, Action Man, of course you can." Give me one Action Man. You're like, "No." I think <laughs> it was I, went, me. I, I think I went with that one because I, like, I, I can't do it. I don't know why. <laughs> So Rick, really when you were scared of um, puppets, were you scared of like Sooty and Sweep? I don't even know what that is. You don't know Sooty and Sweep, the yellow teddy bear so, puppet? And then Sweep, his friend who was a dog, wasn't he? Uh, Sweep was great. He the... was a grey dog with black dog. ears. Yes. No yeah. idea. I got, we need to show yeah, him I've, I've got a city somewhere. That's what, speaking of, do you remember, oh, what was it called with Zippy? Zippy, yeah. Uh, he's not. Don't really, ask he's me not about really like kids. But no, he's not. But the thing that makes me laugh about that is that was a kid's show and the innuendos in that are off the charts. Oh, we're going to play with our twangers. Oh, that's zippy, isn't it? Of course. Yeah, can I twang your yeah. twanger? <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Watch. No, we, this was like oh, no, this the is generation like, before yeah. us. Yeah. This is like our parents. What is a day watch? Oh, damn. Do you think that cartoons today live up to what we used to watch as kids? I don't. I haven't really seen this. The only thing I've seen is things like that. I didn't even watch them back in the day. I was like, like, barely, so. <laughs> see, if I ever have a quick flick through just to see. My kids I don't see anime. <laughs> I don't see because they don't really get animes anymore like we did we had like Beyblades which was fantastic because that turned into a, like a really cool yeah. sport well, sport game to play for us as well um, yeah, like Yu-Gi-Oh Yu-Gi-Oh that yeah one. that was a really Digimon good Pokemon. one and they don't really get that uh, now the, the only thing I think that's done well re, when I if I flip through it is well, um, anime is more for us now these days yeah anime has become a bit yeah. more 
intense, hasn't it? Grown up. Kind of. Well, grown up, uh, mature. Mature, yeah. But then, yeah, it was uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. That's actually quite good. Do you remember Drake and yeah, Josh? That's well. Uh, I, I know of it. I never really watched it. Oh, well, then, um, I think it's Josh. No, Jake, Drake. Um, he is the voice of Spider-Man. Nah. Which is really cool. Um, and I think they, I think they even got Danny Glover to voice, because there's an episode where he goes to different dimensions and he bumps into the Miles Morales Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's voiced Danny by Danny Glover. Glover. He's the guy who's playing Lando. Yes. yes, and he's also playing, we think that, because mm. apparently there's rumours of a spin-off, um, Sony are looking for a, a, a pretty much a character who describes, an, an actor who describes Miles Morales. Oh, yeah, I remember you saying, yeah. So they're talking about this, and Danny Glover's playing his uncle, I think, in the in the current films, and right. his uncle in the Ultimate Universe, in the comics, steals the serum, uh, steals the spider that gives Miles Morales his powers, mm -hmm. so that will be really cool. If that is connected, obviously, I don't. I think the problem is we've just got this new spot. We've completely. just got this yeah. new Spider Man. We don't want to move on to a new one just mm. yet. I like you saying because he's conf you said Tom Holland's confirmed. I said it's not Tom Holland's Spider Man's confirmed for Infinity War. They probably won't do anything to him, but I'm pretty sure it will be Tom Holland. That them because, because yeah, throw in another Spider Man. Because I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how the Spider Man going. I'm so happy that like some things from our childhood. Obviously, I think Spider Man is. I don't see it going away anytime soon Spider-Man mm. I think is always going to be big and same with Batman and Superman I don't think they're going anywhere even if they have blunders like some people at the moment because apparently this is just a rumour this isn't um, necessarily true or anything but apparently behind the scenes of Justice League at the moment oh God, is in yeah, shambles yeah, yeah. really badly um, apparently affecting the Batman film yeah which is it's also making apparently again this is just rumours it's making Ben Affleck hesitant to direct it because yeah. if, if it's all going to well, give up last thing I saw from what he said he said it's like really simple like all is good, things are fine, or something like that. He said something like that Do about the Batman film. Yeah. So I was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> but I hope so. It, they were saying, like, like is, it, is, is DC, someone was suggesting, is it better for DC to maybe just pack it up and then start I again in a few that, years' time? Yeah. Which I don't know. But the thing is, I don't think that you can ever kill the, that comic universe with Batman and Superman because the films might take a hit. But you guarantee in a few years' time, like you said, if they do make a comeback, that no one's going to be like, oh, it's a new Superman, man. I refuse to watch it. Most people will be like, I'll give it a chance. And they, I don't think you can ever completely kill off its audience mm. by making bad films. Well, the problem, I think those characters will be around. their time. She's like, you know, it's released some Batman films. We've got the Man of Steels. We put them together into their own film together. Try again. <laughs> um, and they can slowly sort of do that and then go, oh, here's a new hero. Here's a new hero. Then boom. What then from group one. what from your childhood would you like to see be remade? You say that. Um, I forgot to bring this up earlier. Um, Digimon, they've got the new series. I need to watch it. It's not out in uh, dub yet. Is it? Oh, it's not, it's yet. not dubbed yet. Oh, no. Okay. Um, but I know well, what you mean. Yes, dubbed, where, that. and that's actually gone back to the original characters, and they're grown yeah. up now, aren't they? Mm. They're like uh, late teenagers, early adults, I mm. think. Um, yeah, that looked very interesting. Art style is kind of cool as well. Yeah, it's sort of different. And also, we've got Power Rangers, which is really cool. Um, adapting yeah. to the new day and age. Same with um, Spider Man. Obviously, I was they're about adapting to say all the heroes. They're just coming back. Yeah, <laughs> which is really and cool. With your stuff for us, which is perfect. There Batman, some... like, is just let's see the new ones. Is so brutal. He's perfect for me what, at this age. There's a panic at the moment, and I'm a bit concerned as well. They've bought the rights to make Naruto a live action film, and obviously mm -hmm. after Dragon Ball Evolution stuff, people are nervous. <laughs> Uh, and the problem is because and like the last Airbender, which wasn't I was great. Just Attack on Titan. They said it was it was a, the human element was a bit poo, wasn't it? Apparently, yeah. Apparently, the Titans. I still need to watch it, but apparently, the Titans are incredible. Um, the actual effects and how they look. Well, apparently, I think they did make it a proper love story, didn't they? As well between the two main characters. Yeah, which they never. Um, well, as far as you are in the series, they. Yeah, yeah, season one, they haven't really done anything of it. You can see Mikasa being a bit like, bro. I like you. Yeah. She never says it, but you're like, you can tell. Yeah. And he's just sexually frustrated as anything. <laughs> he's just going to eat a potato. No, that's uh, Sasha's job. But, that, like, those... I, I'm a bit concerned, because Naruto is a show that really has meant a lot to me over the years. It's a show that I really enjoyed. It was my favourite show as a teenager. Throughout my teenage years, Naruto was my favourite show. So, it will be quite sad. It's had a good ending, you know. I'm happy with the way it ended. It was a satisfying mm. ending. I will be really sad if it comes back as a live action film and it doesn't live up to it because the problem is you're going to have... Love you. you're, you're afraid of it. You're not like, oh, this is awesome. You're like, I p just please don't. <laughs> yeah. Because the fact is you're going to have kids being the main actors which might mean that... And they they're gonna, they might be scared to go into some of the story things like... Well, how old would they go with it maybe? They might what? go like, you know, 20 year olds. Or maybe. The thing is because it needs to be... If they start from the, the beginning... Oh, let's, let's see. Let's, let's start from the beginning. Naruto is meant to be 12 or 13. 
in the first series, and he's 16 slash 17 by the yeah, end of it. True, yeah, they could do yeah. that. That could work. If they were to make Naruto like 14, 15, I, see, I don't think they would get and then use like a, a 17, 18 actor. actor. Yeah, I think yeah. they would get you know, older. That could work quite well. And I, I think it, it has the potential to be great. The story does. Mm. It's just scary when you've seen that a lot of anime live action tra- uh, transactions haven't worked. Yeah. It's hard to make it a movie anyway. Transitions, not transactions. You try to transactions. make a TV, <laughs> you try to make a, TV yeah. a movie out of a TV show like that. Well, the problem is, this is where the, I feel The Walking Dead works better than the most zombie films. For stuff like TV shows being turned into movies, you need the long term ivity, which the TV show had. Yeah. Which yeah. you just don't get from a film. Yeah. The film is limited to two or three hours. You can't draw it out. Like, that's why Game of Thrones, I don't think, would have worked as films, but it, it, wouldn't. it works damn well as a TV show. Mm. And I think that, yeah, TV, turning TV shows into films, unless you're just going to take a very specific story from it, it's not going to work. It's an arc. Mm. Like, well, even an arc might be long. Games could Too work long. because, like stuff like Halo, for example, because the reason that Halo might take so long to complete, like the first game, is because you've got a lot of hard difficulty and you're dying a lot. But yeah. whereas if you just play it all out how it's meant to be played out in a film, well, you, can blitz you could probably, fast, yeah. Story-wise. So yeah. that stuff like that could work very well. Mm. It's just obviously... Um, Oh, yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. I don't want them to do it. Um, and it's like that Detective Pikachu movie, but luckily they're not going... When they were what? live action Pokemon. What? But it's Detective Pikachu, which... I thought it was just I'm, a game. No, I'm actually okay with that because one, I probably won't watch it, but... As she's saying that, I probably Live will. action Pikachu. Yeah, they do well, like a live action Pokemon movie, like, like CGI, CGI Pikachu. Right. Yeah. Um, the, but if they, kind of if they had tried to actually do it with Ash getting the badges, I don't... A live action, I don't think that would work. I think it's smart to not try and do that because it's going to be very difficult to make that work. Um, like, because you need a long-term liberty of a TV show. I don't think it would work as a film. I just think of what you're saying. I want more um, was it Pokemon Origins. Pokemon Origins. Well, that was um, fantastic. You should watch. They're doing a Pokemon miniseries. It's like on quite a few episodes in now. Um, yeah, it's doing, really good. It's like different. It's like yeah, one story, episode of each game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, or well, something. Like it's just short stories from different regions. Yeah. And that, that's really good. That's worth a watch. Yeah, the and they're only one. like five or six minutes long each. So mm-hmm. it's not like you have to commit a huge amount of time to them. It is really, really good. good. It's just where like, where, oh, I just remember like, was it Charmander um, being bitten by Squirtle? I was like, oh. Oh, that was quite horrible. No, that was quite graphic. Get off yeah. him. The scream. The yell, like, yell. No, yell. Leave him alone. That got complaints from parents saying it was too violent. When a world of PC gone mad. <laughs> animal cruelty. <laughs> like it was animal cruelty. It's not that bad. It made me sad. Like, no, you but uh, <laughs> I think we should probably end it there. I think we've we've covered oh, wow. quite a lot. We've um, we've, um yeah. we, we've uh we've talked about our traumatizing moments as children. The times <laughs> that Ben managed to KO himself in the face with his own knee. <laughs> I thought it was in my hands. And then pass out. <laughs> much. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening, guys. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, please give it a like. Um, if you have any topics you would like us for us to discuss, please leave them in the comment section below or send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Um, but until then, we'll see you next time. See you all later. Bye.